Well, Corey, I got to ask you, you know, you have made a lot of stops along the road in this managerial coaching career of yours. I mean, you have seen some unbelievable places. What was the Taiwan thing? Um, I mean, it was awesome. Uh, I mean, it's just, uh, you know, a different part of the world. I mean, it was great. Um, I mean, the players were really good. Uh, at a level, certain level, there's not a lot of them there. There's only four teams. So you have four major league teams and four minor league teams. But um, the people there are just unbelievable. Um, the Taiwanese people just love their baseball. Um, just incredible fans. I really enjoyed it. Um, it, it was just tough being gone from your family for, you know, ten months straight at a time. That was probably the toughest part. But um, the, way, the way they do it, the manager has to do a lot of stuff. Um, he's got to do the draft. Um, and it's, it's weird how they do it also is all the rain outs, there's no double headers in it. So they play them in the middle of the first half and the second half. And you have to play them on the same days that you have the rain out for the fans. Everything is for the fans. Now. There's nothing wrong with that because the fans are unbelievable. Great people. Um, I, I really enjoyed my time there. But um, it was just, uh, you know, tough being for so sure. long. So now this opportunity comes along. You had connections through this whole thing already. And, and, and what's it been like? I know we're only, you know, less than a weekend, a weekend of the season. What's it been like so far here? You know, it's been, it's been good. It's just, you know, you kind of get back into, uh, you know, the players that are coming out these days. They're different players. They have different mentalities. Um, but I mean, I've enjoyed it. I mean, spring training was a blast. You know, bringing, you know, 35, 36 players in and seeing how you have to whittle it down and see kind of who, uh, who rises and who, uh, who doesn't get it done. So um, it's been great. I mean, it's baseball. I mean, it's a game. I love it. I love teaching it. Um, I love managing it. I love being in this part of it. Um, but, uh, you know, you just have to realize the level you're at and understand that and have a lot of patience there as well. So just learning that is great. You know, it, it, it's interesting because there are very few guys out there and Jim Rivlin and I were talking about you just a few minutes ago. There are very few guys that were really good players in their day that aren't afraid to go back and coach and or manage in the minor leagues. A lot of them want to step into big leagues and stay on those charter planes and everything, and yet here you are. Why? Um, you know, I love the game. I think everybody gets caught up in the business part. Um, was I a little bitter at the end of baseball? I feel like I got pushed out? Yes. But getting back in the game in 2007 in indie ball, and then going to the Mariners, and then doing what I do, um, it just—I have two boys. I won this in AAA with the Rockies right now. So it almost was like everybody gets caught up in the business part of baseball sometime during their career. I get it, but it's still an unbelievable game. It's a fun game, and you love teaching it. So for me to give back and be able to tell these guys, look, I know what it takes to get to each level. Now, if you're willing to listen and learn and want to get better, I'm willing to do whatever it takes to help you. And that's the part that's the fun part. When you're working with a kid and all of a sudden his eyes get gigantic and it's like, I get it now. Okay, now you know that, that was really, you know, what, what makes it all work. It. So, it, uh, I mean, that just, it's part of the game and it's baseball. Last thing I wanted to ask you about, when, when you think about this whole journey for these guys, I mean, you know, you were a guy, you got through the minor leagues quick, you're in the big leagues, and off you go, and all-star, and all, all that kind of thing. For these guys, being non-affiliated, independent league, for a lot of them, probably their last shot. You know, Jim talked about how hard it was to tell some of those guys, you know, it's time to go. I don't imagine that can't be any easier for you or anybody else in that position, is it? Um, that's the worst part about this job, is letting kids go. Because it's just, I mean, get that same feeling of when I finally realized I couldn't play anymore, it was time to move on. That was the hardest day of your life. Because you, you love baseball, you love what you're doing, um, and you think there's nothing else besides baseball. And when you have to let a kid go, um, it's just like this is his livelihood. This is all he loves, all he dreams about. And when you got to say, you know what, there's some other kids that are just a little bit ahead of you, you know, I gotta let you go. I mean, I try everything possible to kind of have teams down below me and teams above me to let kids go somewhere, give them some options. Right. Because I just tell the kids all the time, if you got a uniform on, you got a chance. Someday you're not gonna have a uniform. I get it if you get too old or whatever it is, but um, I mean, Jim knows. It's the worst part about the job is letting kids go. I mean, it, it just, uh, it's a sad reality, but you know, kids that learn, kids that listen, kids that get better are the ones that are gonna move on.
but the ones that, in my opinion, are a little stubborn and they're stuck in their ways, you know, your next level is nine to five. Yeah. And you got to put a suit on. And you got to get up every day and do what they tell you. And uh, it, it's a hard reality, but um, it kind of is what it is. But I tell them, you know what? Keep playing. Play as long as you possibly can. As long as you are still enjoying it and you're still learning and you still want to get better, keep playing.